Hello everybody, welcome back or just welcome to my little channel here. I am in a great mood because I just finished this tank and it's beautiful. It is very beautiful. Now if you want to see how I got to this uh, to this end result, make sure to watch all the way to the end of the video um, where I'll also be announcing the um, basically my next project which will determine the not only the next few videos, but really the future of this channel for probably the next six months to a year. It's a big project, so, you know. Um, yeah, in any case, uh, if you if you learn something new during this video, make sure to, you know, like. It lets me know that you, uh, that you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. And uh, sort of gives me any, an idea of what, what you guys like to watch. Um... And if you would like to see more of my content and also help me help me grow as a page or as a channel, sorry, uh, I would also love it if you subscribed. But in any case, thank you for uh, yeah watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoy. And you know, if you do subscribe while you're at it, uh, make sure to also go follow my Instagram page where I have. Uh, more frequent updates on my projects and that'll be right here hopefully um, yeah and enjoy the video guys so first of all I'm gonna be starting out by working on the front and middle section of the tank by adding some sandbags mainly later on we're gonna be adding more details there but first we're gonna start with some sandbags I know that that's very unconventional especially for a stug tank but the thing is the diorama that this tank is going to be going on, it's a trench diorama, or it has trenches, rather. Uh, meaning it has a lot of sandbags already, so this will just help to integrate it more into the diorama, making it less of a diorama with a tank, and more of a proper tank diorama, if that makes sense. So, to make these sandbags, I'm going to be using a air dry clay. This is Fimo Air. Uh, it's from Stedler, so you know it's it's pretty decent quality. Um, I've also had experience with Das modeling clay in the past. Also, a really good product. Highly recommend. I have a small uh, I have a small bit of our of our modeling clay here, not particularly measured out. And because this stuff can dry actually surprisingly quickly, you are gonna want to have some water handy, just a cup of water, and it is gonna be your best friend. You want to make sure and hydrate your clay multiple times throughout the process. So I'm going to start out by hydrating it just a little bit and then kneading it within my fingers. Try and try and mix it up together. Then once it's ready, once it's nice and uh, nice and malleable, you're going to want to make sort of a noodle just by rolling it in your hands, right? Sort of stretch it out with your fingers, tease it a little bit. And there are, it's hard to have exact measurements with this, but as a general rule of thumb, I try to keep it at around 1.2 centimeters dia uh, diameter, this uh, this noodle. And sometimes it's gonna be a little thicker in some areas, a little thinner in some areas. Try to avoid that, but if it, it's inevitable. So we got this right here. Nice stick of string cheese. So, uh, you can see I've made two markings here with my knife on my on my little wooden pallet here uh, where this is a rough guideline for how how big how long our you know our sandbags are gonna be so first we're gonna start off by cutting off an end piece because it's ugly yeah that's yeah that's what my, what girls say to me every day. Uh, no, I'm just joking, don't worry. Um, and yeah, just using our guideline, we're gonna wanna cut it out. And you can see it might look a little short, but it is very chunky, as you can see. Um, so this is gonna be spread out later when we, when we actually give it the shape of the proper sandbag. So yeah, just cut these out. So usually when I'm working on a larger diorama, on a larger project, you know, I don't put too much care into my into my sandbags as usually I'll be making anywhere between 20 to 200, which can seem like a lot. But 
these, we're not going to be making too many. So we're going to give them some care. So you can see they're a little, like I said, chunky. Uh, what we are going to be doing is spreading them out just a little bit, flattening them ever so slight with our, with our fingers, obviously making it a little thicker in the middle. Then we're going to sort of want to pull out the edges and make uh, soft corners, not too, not too harsh. Otherwise it looks, it looks a little unrealistic and weird to be frank. Um, and yeah, just sort of uh, stretch it out a little bit, do what you need. And it's at this point you can see we have some cracks going on in there. This is when we know it's a good time to rehydrate the clay starting to dry a little bit so get some water rub it on there and it's good to go again now like I mentioned we are going to be putting some more care into these uh, into these sandbags than I usually would so with our hobby knife or a toothpick or a kitchen knife I don't really care but with some sort of a sharp object we are going to be going in, and let me see if I can get good close to the camera. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making incisions on each side of the sandbag. And just do that a few times. Now you can see that creates some nice, nice sort of stitching effects. You can always clean it up if need be but I find it to be quite nice. And here you already see that we kind of got some natural stitching effects from folding it, but we're gonna be enhancing that. And again, just do it on all sides. So, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do this for quite a few, um, you're gonna to want to make a few sandbags, you know, not too many, because this tank isn't really gonna require that much. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and made seven sandbags. Uh, these are decently sized. I also always like to have a little guy, uh, a 135th scale figure, next to him just to just to get a, get an idea of scale. And these are pretty decent. So at this stage, you want them to be sort of dry on the outside so that they don't leave sort of a, a white imprint. Uh, but you do want them still, you know, of course, malleable. So then what you're going to want to do is grab your tank, all right? And we are not going to be painting these on the tank, but we are going to be placing them first. So, um, as a matter of like where they put them, it's it's sort of hard to know on these Stug tanks because they, well, it was like I said, it was unconventional to do that. You know, they didn't they didn't have sandbags on their tanks, but uh, so as a general idea, uh, I'm gonna be sort of going and trying to place some 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 are a bit smaller than others, so you got to be careful with that, but. Uh, I'm going to be trying to sort of protect this gunner here, uh, the machine gunner, which uh, generally I guess they would try to do, uh, whether it was sandbags or you know anything else. And usually here there's the there's a periscope to, or well the scope for the gun. Uh, unfortunately. Throughout my building process, or throughout my painting process, rather, somehow it just disappeared. Like it, it, it was gone from one moment to the next. I don't know where it went. Uh, so I'm not going to be covering it up. Uh, not going to be covering that hole up. But that's just for realism's sake, you know. So, yeah, and make sure all the doors and hatches are still able to open. Because obviously they wouldn't cover their, they wouldn't cover the doors or hatches. Uh, otherwise, you know, they would just be trapped in their tank, which 
uh, I could imagine they wouldn't particularly want. Not the greatest thing to have. Right. Sometimes you still need to sort of elongate some, make some smaller, fatter, whatever you need to do just to, just to make it fit a bit better. And you can sort of play around with it. Um, I could still go ahead and make some more right now, which I'm sort of debating because I'm not sure how much I like this setup right here. Um, Yeah, it's sort of it's sort of hard to know. Uh, yeah, like I said. So, okay, I just decided in my mind I'm gonna make some more. I'm gonna maybe like four more uh, just to see where they can go. I'm gonna be trying and making some ones that maybe fell off and fell down on the slopes of the tank, stuff like that. You know. So yeah, let's. Uh, I'll show you guys once I've once I've done that and finished finished the, setting them up. So now you can see I've finished the sandbags. Um, unfortunately, they're I would recommend you actually make them a bit smaller. I feel like they're a tiny bit out of scale, <clears throat> which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Uh, you can see our our guy here. Some are in scale, some are a little bit too big. So you know, oh well. Um, you know, we'll make it better next time, right? <laughs> uh, so, basically, uh, now you're gonna want to let this to fully dry overnight, and I'm even gonna let it dry for for a full 24 hours, just to you know be sure uh, before painting them. And you don't want to glue them on at this stage, right? You still want them loose, uh, but do maybe take pictures at this point just to know the placement of where each sandbag is so that after they're painted we can put them on and yeah put them in their exact placement again so while that is drying uh, I do want to take a look at this back area here um, so I'm gonna be adding stowage to this back area uh, by stowage I mean blankets packs uh, ammunition boxes, you know, that sort of stuff. The the normal type of stuff that you would find on the back of a tank, right? Um, the, the, the tank crew is living in their tank, it's their home, so they need, they need equipment to live. So I'm gonna be splitting up the type of stuff that we're, the type of stowage that we're putting on here uh, into two categories. So first we have the, the hard parts, and second we have the soft parts and as a general rule of thumb you could imagine that all the hard parts are all the parts that in real life would be well hard um, so you know wooden crates uh, ammunition boxes weapons stuff like that whereas uh, the other stuff would be for example um, you know blankets backpacks or rugsacks, you know, tarps, that sort of stuff. Um, so what I generally like to do is sort of have a layout already, have a layout planned in my mind. And when you're making that planning, you want to keep in mind that uh, you can't stack so much stuff on here that it blocks these, these engine vents, right? Because then the engine would overheat and, well, yeah, you can imagine how that ends. So, uh, you're gonna want to keep at least at least one full one uh, completely exposed, uh, or you can sort of cover up half of one or half of each, rather. Um, in any case, I'm gonna try and focus most of my stowage sort of in this area. Uh, keep this a little bit more free. Maybe add like a helmet or two. We'll see. So first of all, I'm going to grab all of the uh, small or all of the hard parts that I want. So what I have here is a kit of German weapons and boxes 
from uh, this is from Tamiya. It's I really don't know when this kit is from, but I don't believe it's that old to be honest. Uh, maybe early 2000s. In any case, there's some pretty good stuff on here. Um, we have some grenade boxes. I'm gonna be using some of those uh, for sure. And of course, we have ammunition boxes. Now, what I want to do is later on, once these sandbags dry and once they're painted, I want to add a uh, I want to add an ammunition box here, right next to the MG, where of course they would need ammunition if need be. So yeah, and later on, we're going to be adding empty shell casings here on the here on the edges where the you know the the shells would eject. So yeah, like I said. Um, the grenade boxes, the, the grenade, yeah, boxes, ammunition boxes, uh, and generally I'm going to be adding here in the, in the cupola, I think that's the right word, I'm going to be adding some, some, uh, sorry, what's it called, I'm forgetting the word, I'm going to be adding an, an MP40, uh, which is usually the weapon that the commander would, would have the, you know, the carry, the hand carry weapon, and... Yeah, so we're going to be doing all of that for some of the, you know, these plastic resin parts. Uh, we also have over here, if I can grab them, uh, I'm also going to be putting two jerry cans. Now, because this tank is going to be in a sniper position, the jerry cans, most of them are going to be rather on the side or in the trench system. Um, where it might be a little safer. Uh, and so we are still going to have two two on there, but usually there would be a lot more. And then what we're also going to be doing is we're going to be creating some logs to, to go on here. I'm thinking maybe two or three logs just to go on the back, just as sort of a, a space filler. And so in the end, it should look pretty nice. So I'm going to start doing that and I'll show you guys the first step, which is making your tarp. So for this, for this placement tarp, uh, really the main function is as you can see on the back of our tank, it is, it is a pretty flat bed. However, sometimes it's going to, it might be a little awkward for, for wooden crates or stuff like that. So, uh, we're going to be putting a tarp on the back so that any of the hard parts that we put on there, those are gonna be, they're, they're gonna fit a bit more snugly and they're gonna be, they're gonna be a lot nicer. So again, we're gonna need our air dry clay, again, uh, Fimo Air. And to get our board ready, uh, you can use either talcum powder, uh, which unfortunately I don't have at the moment, or what I like to do is just use some water, sort of wet your surface. Um, this just helps with not making it stick too badly to the to the board, and it also helps rehydrate your uh, your clay while you're while you're working with it. So you're gonna want to grab a relatively sizable chunk. This is gonna be a thick uh, with two C's, a thick tarp uh, that's going to be folded over multiple times. So like we did with the sandbags, I still have some water on my hands, so just going to rehydrate it with that. Either way, I like to, I like to add a few drops of water per week um, in, my, in my sealed bag with my, uh, with my air dry clay just to keep it rehydrated while I'm not using it. Knead it a little bit and then you're going to want to have it down right. It doesn't matter too much the shape that it's in you could use uh, you know a square or a circle it doesn't matter too much now grabbing a wooden dowel here uh, you're gonna try and wet it a little bit with some water um, it's a little hard to do so over the whole dowel so I'm mainly gonna be using the edge of the dowel to flatten it out now It's a little hard when it's completely wet, but eventually it gets a little easier to roll it out and it's better than having it stick everywhere. You know, uh, that's not so fun. So, wow, yeah, this is a little too wet. Okay, so 
once you have it sort of flat that it has general general flatness shape you know then you're gonna want to keep rolling it out and try and avoid it sticking again if need be you can always add more water but I'm not gonna do that for now so you want it to be pretty thin not too thin though because again this is gonna be a relatively thick tarp with two C's um, yeah so you can smooth that out with your finger do whatever you like boom and now we're gonna be cutting out a rectangle uh, measurements I really don't care uh, I don't do measurements for this part because it's I think just just generally try and keep in scale but they would have different size tarps you know different size blankets but generally I like to have it a pretty long rectangle and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight as we're gonna be folding it so it sort of distorts the shape either way so really you don't have to worry too much here and this is the moment of truth because here it's risky. You don't want the uh, you don't want your clay to stick too much to your board. Otherwise, it well, yeah, it messes it up. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the rest of this clay here, just so that we can work further with this tarp. Okay, and we're gonna be using some some of this later on as well. So don't put that to waste. Okay, now we're gonna wanna get the uh, we're gonna wanna smooth it out to get the general rectangle shape again. And you can sort of thin down the edges. You don't have to thin down the whole area, the whole surface area, because then it'll be very you know it'll spread out a lot. But when you have it like this, it's not too thick at the edges, but it is a nice space filler. And you can really fold this in any way that you want, but try and have your tank as a reference. Um, so generally, okay, I got it. So I've actually gone ahead and made my tarp a little bit smaller. Sorry for that abrupt cut there. Um, but I actually made my tarp smaller uh, because as I tried to fold it and place it on the tank it turns out it was a bit too big which can happen and if it's your first time it likely will happen um, that it's too big or too small that's what she said um, so just you know yeah that's alright not to say that this is my first time don't worry but yeah so now I'm gonna fold it and just try and try and fold it in a way that it'll fit nicely on your tank and try and place it on your tank on an angle that it shows the most amount of detail so the most you know folds uh, why because you know then we can get that detail so as you can see here that's a that's a nice little fold there and you can see it it simulates quite nicely a you know, a thick, flat tarp. And this is a great emplacement for uh, what's going to be our, in the future, our, uh, our hard bits. Sorry, I lost the word there for a second. So uh, while we're at it, you are going to want to, while this is still dry, you can still rehydrate it carefully a little bit uh, while avoiding to get the you know the the white bits everywhere actually no you can just take it off what am i saying stupid um yeah so uh i'm gonna start by actually putting most of the hard bits on the uh on there first and then over that i'm gonna be putting more of the or not more but a few a few soft bits uh if that makes sense so yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that. Now, as you can see here, I've 
pretty much finished my layout for the uh, for you know the uh, hard bits. Um, now, as you can see, uh, I've put three ammo boxes, one grenade case, two um, what's it called? Uh, two logs. These aren't going to be like this. Don't worry. They're gonna be. They're gonna have some more texture, and they're gonna be painted nicely. Um, same goes for all the other equipment. Uh, you know, simple. So before I add my uh, so-called soft bits, I'm gonna let this dry for uh, similar to the sandbags, 24 hours. Uh, if you do this all in one night, then efficiency. You know, uh, and what this allows it to do is really let everything sort of sit and sink into the into the tarp and later on once you once you paint it and eventually fit it back on it fits super nicely and then on top of that we're going to be adding the so-called soft bits so uh yeah that's all for tonight um i'll see you guys tomorrow yeah right so now that we've finished all of our uh, our hard bits now we're going to move on to some more of the of the soft bits, so excluding the sandbags and the, the one tarp that we did before. Now I do recommend that you try and do this this part, especially the, the soft bits, all in one evening or at least one in, in one go, in one afternoon, whatever, uh, because that, that allows for not only the stowage that we make to fit around the hard bits, but also to sort of fit and conform their shapes around themselves so that they really integrate with each other and similar to what I mentioned earlier with like instead of it being a, a diorama with a tank, uh, it being a, a tank diorama, this will be sort of not a tank with some bags and whatever it'll it'll really look like it's all one thing and together so uh, I'm gonna start out by doing uh, more stowage I'll move on to uh, to flat or folded blankets later on um, so I'll start by mainly doing a duffel bag type look actually I'm not gonna show you guys how I make every single piece because unless you're trying to be super historically accurate and like researching what kind of rucksacks they had, really it's mainly just a matter of creativity. So I'll just show you guys sort of the, the basis knowledge that you need to have and um, the tools that you can use and the techniques that you can use to, to make a nice, uh, a nice bit of stowage. So I'm going to start by actually making a duffel bag, like I just said. So you can see I've rolled out sort of a, a thick noodle shape and of course have your tank on standby just to sort of compare and look at what the what the sizes are and of course your, your little 135th scale figure. Now this is a little big so I'm actually going to cut it uh, to scale and really just do it slowly by slowly cut it slowly by slowly alright and again slowly by slowly you will get there Okay, so this is about good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I just have the general shape now, now I'm going to start sculpting. So you're going to want to have some some sort of a sculpting toolkit or uh, your hobby knife should do alright and uh, either way I would recommend you also have tweezers. But in any case, I have a wood carving set here, which also works great for, for sculpting. So I'm just going to use that. So what I'm going for here is a sort of duffel bag with a, with a flap overhead. 
Um, and so I'm gonna make a, a small like external pocket here, just to start out with, just to get a feel for what what we're doing and what we're what, what sort of scale we're looking for those those types of things. And I would recommend that you not go in in completely straight lines first of all. And I recommend that instead of scribing out a line in one go, uh, do like you like you just saw me do, uh, sort of poke at it and create a line with that. That creates sort of stitching effects, which are which are very nice. And now to simulate sort of a, a zipper here at the top, I'm actually gonna pinch ever so slightly with my tweezers. Okay, and now we got a sort of external pocket, which maybe it's not the greatest, but it'll do. It's fine. And then to do our flap at the top, what I actually like to do, uh, which I've not seen too many people do actually, is instead of sort of sculpting it out of the shape that I already have, I actually like to make the flap separately. So I sort of make a... a grab a piece of our clay and um, make it very flat, very thin, and I cut it up, right? And you just want a general sort of rough half circle like shape. And this should do just fine, right? Okay. So, like with our sandbags and our tarp, for. You're going to want to have uh, water handy. And I'm using a shish kebab stick that's been soaking overnight in the water. Said it has some water already. And I'm going to just add some water on our previously sculpted duffel bag. Then put some on our little flap here. This also helps it not to stick to the Fish kebab stick, barbecue skewer, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and this is a bit of a delicate part, so sometimes it might take a few tries to, to get it right. But once you get the hang of it, it should be okay. Okay, so there are some, some small cracks here. So not the cleanest job, perhaps, but will be uh, we'll try and make this so that it's maybe underneath a blanket or something so that's not too visible but there is the shape of the uh, the actual duffel bag now some more details that you can add is here at the bottom to make sort of a, a sharper edge you can sort of pinch at it uh, this is sort of like stitching obviously this is way out of scale these these stitches um, but you do what you can, you know, uh, whatever works, right? And of course, smooth out any cracks or anything that you find, uh, especially with this with this type of clay, it's inevitable. It's inevitable that you'll find these cracks, which is which is fine. And who knows, maybe one day I'll learn to avoid them, but... Right, and then I'm also going to make sort of a, a hatch or a buckle to go over here, uh, over that little flap that we just made, uh, just to simulate, well, a buckle. Um, now I'm going to have a bit of a thicker piece of our clay, and cut it to size. Just a just a small rectangle will do. Right. And you pry it out. So right now that we have our buckle, or our little our, our little strap here. gonna put it on there and it's actually a little big but that's okay I 
And again, use our wet shish kebab stick to sort of blend it into the actual clay. And once it dries, it should it should dry almost completely as one thing. But and flatten it out, lengthen it, do whatever you want with it. Again, that's really creativity. And then just to sort of make the make the shape of a buckle, I'm gonna I'm gonna scribe out a small small square here, right, and then. Something like that, right? Simple, easy, and it looks great. And if you want, you can even add like a, a sort of sling to this. I reckon I probably will, or at least on some of the duffel bags that will go on top. I'm not gonna add too much of the, too many soft bits, otherwise it gets too much. But you get the idea. Now, moving on to making blankets, right? Um, now with the with actual with the blankets that you would like fold or just have straight up over the over the over the hard bits or potentially soft bits, uh, you already saw me do that, so you know you know how to do that. But to make rolled up blankets, it's a little different, um, but definitely not hard. So just hydr hydrating my clay here, flattening it out and making it thin. Now this is really one of the only pieces of stowage where you can, well no, you can add a lot of detail to the other pieces of stowage, but I find that this is the easiest to add details to and it's it's the best looking in my opinion. All right, so once we have our rough blanket size and thickness, you're gonna wanna Cut it out, right? This is all similar to the tarp that we did earlier, but it's the the rolling process and the sculpting process where it really starts to change and take a nice shape. I feel like Bob Ross. Oh my god. I feel like I feel like one day I actually do want to make like Bob Ross type videos, very relaxing. Because I've been told by people like on Instagram and stuff that at least my first video like without the music and where I was not trying to be not trying to be a bit more upbeat and everything so that the videos would be more in, or fun to watch uh, I was being told by people that I gave off so called Bob Ross Bob Ross uh, vibes and some people seem to enjoy it, so maybe one day I'll make a few videos like that. If you do want that, let me know in the comments, I guess. Okay, so to start our rolling process, to start the bulk, um, I'm going to fold over about a quarter or like two-fifths, something like that. Right. And then we actually start to roll, surprise, surprise, and... Lo and behold, it actually does look sort of like a, a rolled up blanket. But obviously, we're not going to stop here. What we're first going to do is I'm actually going to grab some wire. As it doesn't matter what type of wire uh, thickness, obviously, don't make it too thick. But okay, it's still sort of attached to this wool here, so it's going to be a little tricky. But basically, I'm just going to press into it with the wire. Right. Okay. And then with the back of your hobby knife, you can come in and make it an actual circular shape again. And then you're going to want to get a fresh fish kebab stick, so, uh, you know, a, a pretty sharp one. And we're going to be creating some, some bigger creases here, first of all. all right, sort of pull at it, poke at it, do whatever looks best, of course. That's what this hobby is all about, 
right? Well, no, realism too, but y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Okay, now these are obviously very big creases. So what I'm going to do is uh, I recommend you have a, a sort of a diamond shaped uh, tip on your on your hobby blade or just just a sort of triangle shaped one and I'm actually going to be using my hobby knife to make some some smaller creases right and okay, let me see if I can get my camera any closer y'all ah. almost fell there we go that's better So you can see it's it's quite a simple process, you know. Just add straps wherever you or add creases wherever you please, and it has a nice amount of detail. And some of these creases you can make you can make them go all the way across to the other side, which I find makes it quite nice. Okay, so now that we have all of our all of our like sort of creases in, now we're actually going to make some straps. Um, and again, you can use the same method for making the uh, making a sling for the duffel bag, or really for for anything for your rifle as well. Uh, well, not for your own rifle, but for the one thirty fifth scale figure rifle um, or pistol if you're weird. Uh, right, so I'm gonna make. I'm gonna start out by making one long strip. Oh, my hobby knife is on screen. Yeah, so I'm gonna start out by making one long strip. Okay. And again, pry it out. And it's split in two here, but that's um, that's actually okay. That's what we were gonna do anyways. I was gonna cut it in two to accommodate for the uh, two straps that we need. But on the streets, I don't need a strap. Sorry, that came out. I don't know why. Okay, um, and of course, you shape it in your fingers if it got a little messy. Then it's as simple as just putting it on, and then you can blend it in with uh, can blend in the edges with the with the back of your hobby knife. Just so that it doesn't look too like alien, if that makes sense. Just so that the uh, the strap feels as though it's supposed to be there. That it's not super weird. If that makes sense. Okay, so that's one strap down. And then we add another strap. This is a delicate process, but if something breaks, it's it's really fine. It's that's what I love about this clay is that I mean with it with any same with putty, you know. Um you can, you can, if you mess up, you just put it all back together in one big blob and you can start again. It's fine. You know, um, yeah. Okay, so then that's, that's our, that's our rolled up blanket. Um, very, very easy. And, uh, a little time consuming, but that's, that's fine. And, like I always say, sorry that this video is long, but... I think it's well worth it. I would watch this video because I'm cool. You're cool. We all know it. So I'm just going to make a bunch of these. And, uh, well, not a bunch, but a few of these. And sort of collect. And eventually we can we can add them onto our tank. And it's very it's a very fun, rewarding process. So I'm just going to do that. 
I'll show you guys once I've finished. All right, so as you can see, I've now finished my soft bits. Um, I actually didn't add that much else, to be honest. Uh, all I did was I, well, yeah, I, I added the, the rolled up blanket and the duffel bag that I had made before. And, uh, that was all the stowage that I really did. Um, but I did add one like tarp here and a small rag here, uh, that they would use for, for cleaning stuff, you know? Um, and of course, while you're, uh, while you're letting that dry, you can always go back and tweak some things. I'm just noticing here that some of the detail in my creases got lost, so you can always just come back and, and add, add some add some creases again. Uh, again, it's so it's so versatile and easy. It's this is honestly a really fun part. I love I love this part of. Um, not only a tank, but any any build for that matter. You can really add stowage to to anything, even even an abandoned uh, diorama. You know, you can the the possibilities are, are endless. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Uh, so now another uh, another part that you'll an another thing that you'll be happy for that you uh, to have done all of the. Uh, all of the soft bits in one go is that we're now gonna we're now gonna create all the creases that would naturally occur because the crew the crew isn't gonna keep all their stowage just loose like this because it would once they start moving it's gonna fly off uh, so they would have to tie it down with something um, so I just have some wire here to simulate rope later on we're actually gonna be painting this so that it actually does look like rope or um, at least that it's not shiny like this um, and I'm gonna be tying it from from one end here to the other end here and yeah just stretch it out okay and that's gonna be where our rope goes one of them at least and then you do the same for the other side this side is going to be a little more tricky because this is a very steep climb here but just try your best in fact no I'm I'm just gonna go like this because why not um, Okay, and there we have our, our creases. And now, like what we did with our with our blanket earlier, we're gonna add some uh, some creases again around these areas where the ropes would be. Uh, these creases aren't gonna be as intense because we don't want them to be overpowering, you know, but noticeable. So we're just sort of acknowledging that they're there, and sort of a, a how do you do instead of a hello. How are you? You know what I mean? Yeah, sorry, I'm weird. I'm in a weird mood today. Very weird mood. And on this duffel bag, also the same. Um, do, do tease it a little bit because obviously it's gonna be full of stuff, so it's not gonna conform completely to the, to the shape of the rope. Um, Yeah, yeah. I said um as if I was gonna say something else, but I really had nothing else to say or add. So that's that. Uh, I'm not gonna add ropes just yet, um, just because I don't feel like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's me. Right. So there were still some other techniques that I actually wanted to try out and see see what I could do, um, just to spice up the tank, as the title promises. So, I've never seen this done before, um, I'm trying to make empty shell, or bullet casings, uh, to go next to the MG. As you can see, I've cut out, uh, sections of two millimeter, uh, two millimeter sections of, uh, of steel wire, uh, 
and it's uh yeah obviously the the shell casings aren't silver so i'm gonna try and paint these uh not by hand because that would be horrible but i'm gonna uh maybe see what i can do with my airbrush see see what works and yeah let me just get to that okay now i know i literally just said that i was gonna do it uh, by airbrush but i really tried trust me i really tried um and moral of the story it, it doesn't work there is no way that it works so i just ended up doing painting it by hand as you can see here holding it by tweezers and i'm just doing a, a pretty thick paint of uh it's it's i believe just gold color but i mix it with a, a drop of black just to give it a more brass look and a more weathered look and then here uh, i started deconstructing my uh, my tank again like I mentioned earlier you do need to take pictures of it uh, before you do this uh, you know where to place them in the end and then here I'm uh, I'm coming in as I do with most of my models with a black primer uh, now why I chose a black primer was uh, because well that's all I had really but also because it gave sort of a darker undertone once I added the base coat of uh, the color and sort of like a weathered look. Um, yeah, I, I found it to be quite nice. And then here, uh, mixing for my paint, mostly light brown uh, and just a few drops of middle stone. This, uh, this is all by Vallejo, then some airbrush thinner. And then I ended up adding uh, about two drops of black just to darken it down. Now the issue was here that it was very, 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 uh, it was it was too thin of a mixture, and so it wasn't really applying that well. And in retrospect, I, I reckon I should have put my put my PSI a bit lower on my airbrush. But in any case, it uh, yeah. Oh well, you know. Uh, later on, I went in just with straight light brown. And then here, uh, coating, oh, yeah, a lot of spillage there. Sorry you can see, but basically I coated the, uh, all of the, uh, like the duffel bag and the blanket, and rolled up blanket, in olive green. And then here I'm coating the tarp in uh, black. I ended up putting quite a quite a sizable coat on there, but oh well. Now with this blanket, I didn't really know what sort of color I was going for. I just mixed burnt umber with uh, with middle stone. This is what I got. It was quite nice. Then the jerry cans, um, just straight light brown. Also Vallejo. I seem to really like that color. It's a nice color. Not gonna lie, it's great for pre dusting as well. And here, mixing up my paint, um, this was black, middle stone, and burnt umber that I mix up to get sort of a, a middle brown uh, wood color that I then painted over those, uh, those crates. Now, uh, I didn't really know what to do for color here because the, the, German, the German crates were usually a lot lighter color in color for wood, um, but these were actually crates from a Sherman tank, so I figured maybe they were stolen, and those should be a lot darker then, so, yeah, weird. And then here, painting, uh, hand painting details on these jerry cans, I just saw in reference pictures these sort of white stripes, and I figured, yeah, it's cool, it adds some character, and they weren't super visible or noticeable in the end, but I still thought they were pretty cool, so, you know, why not? So now that we've finished our other components, uh, we're going to move on to these logs, and I don't know if you remember me saying, but we are going to do something special uh, with this. So the first uh, the first thing that you're actually going to need is some of the spray adhesive, uh, this one from UHU or 
Uhu, if you uh, prefer, to, prefer to say it that way. Um, but I also, I've also seen people do this, uh, do similar methods with stuff like hairspray. So if you want to try that, then then go ahead. But I just have this handy, so I figure why not. Now this stuff gets everywhere, so I recommend doing this either outside or in a very enclosed environment so that it doesn't get anywhere else. Um, but I'm stupid, and I'm gonna show you guys um, it here out in the open. So I'll try and contain it to my uh, table top here. So try and avoid getting it on the inside of the, of the log, because we don't want any of the texture here. Then you don't need a very thick coat, to be honest. Um, right? And don't worry, uh, it's, it's sticking to like the the table top. It shouldn't do that, in my experience. Okay, and just spread it out with your fingers. Your fingers are gonna stick a lot after this, so. Yeah, that's gonna really suck, but... Oh well. Uh, oh, that was my computer. I don't know if you guys heard that. Okay, now I'm gonna have some of my, uh, some of my homemade modeling pigments. These are, uh, again, this is just, uh, crush up sand, ground up sand. All right. You're gonna grab some in your fingers, and it's as simple as sprinkling it over the log. This adds a nice sort of bark texture. I'm just gonna put some here on my. Uh... And yeah, it's as simple as that, guys. Um, just pop some of it on. And it's not gonna stick everywhere. But that's okay. We're gonna we're actually gonna paint this afterwards. So texture or no texture, it should be the same color everywhere, except for, of course, the inside of the trunk, because we don't want that. Yeah, so I'm just going to finish this, and I'll show you guys once I've finished. So, yeah, um, for, the, for the color, I just went for burnt umber. Uh, very nice wood color, I find. Yeah, pretty solid. And later on with the weathering, I also just went over this with a with an oil wash, as you'll see later. Now at this stage for weathering, I didn't really do anything else, um, but I I just went over all the metallic components with a soft pencil, just over the edges. Adds a nice metallic sheen, which I I do on most of my models. So yeah, very nice detail. Okay, so as you can see, I've done most of the reconstruction on our uh, on our tank here. Actually, all of the reconstruction. Um, now, uh, what I want to do is something that I've never seen done before, to be honest. Which I don't know how this is gonna pan out. So, <laughs> if I severely mess up, then oh well. If I don't, then oh well. Uh, then that's cool. Um, so what I've done here is a little hard to see on camera, but there is a map on that tiny piece of paper. And what I want to do is I want to make it sort of like there's there's a map near the near the commander's cupola. So I have already, for example, my binoculars here that I'll have next to the map, and I'll also probably put this this uh, weapon here. I'm not I'm not sure if I will though because the sling is sort of shiny for some reason um, anyways so I'll yeah uh, okay so I think I've kind of came up with a method on how how to do this so I have my map here I want it to have a bit of a worn look so I'm gonna fold it a few times actually uh, like such and just fold it nice and nice and tightly um, ok 
Okay, I think that should be good-ish. No, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold it one more time. Do you realize it or not, we have just passed the one hour mark of this video. If you've watched all the way to this point, just know that I really, really love you. Thank you. Just for good measure. And one more time, just for good measure. Okay. That should definitely be good. I hope I didn't overdo it. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. We'll have to see. No, actually that's that's kind of perfect. So I'm gonna bring you guys a bit closer here. All right, now you can see our map. So, uh, I have a bottle of this stuff that I made. It's uh, it's near empty now, but you can see that white stuff at the bottom. Um, basically, this is my scenic glue mixture. Uh, I got the mixture from a guy named Luke Tawan. He has a great YouTube channel. Highly recommend you you check him out. Um, basically, it's like heavily watered down PVA glue with a few drops of dish soap. And I'm right to my last few drops of my bottle. Um, so at this point, it's almost all PVA. But I figure what I'm going to do is just grab a brush full of this stuff and brush it over our... Watch some jiggy. Our uh, map. Or a piece of paper, whatever you want to call it. And then with a piece of uh, uh, toilet paper or just tissue, just dab over it and remove most of the glue. And again, I have no idea if this is going to work, so I really hope it does because I think it, I think it could be really cool if it does work, but we'll have to see. And then, oh, oh. Uh, then we'll grab our map okay and then I reckon I'll put it right here I didn't think this through I didn't think about where I would put my map okay uh, this is gonna be long and boring so I'm just gonna skip ahead to uh, when I finish it and yeah when and if I finish it so yeah <laughs> okay so as you can see it turned out super great it's still it's still a little wet so it's to dry a little bit I reckon that'll take a, an hour or two but you can see it oh man I'm really not gonna lie I'm really proud of this because I've never seen somebody else do this um, I mean probably somebody else probably has but I did this without like any tutorial or anything and I think it turned out great. So anyways, uh, <laughs> with that aside, as you can see, I also added this um, MP40 and the, uh, the monoculars, also a, a great touch I find. And you can see our stowage is pretty much done. Um, now I still do wanna do some, uh, some weathering on this, but before we do that, I'm actually gonna add the, the rope. So if I bring you guys up here so as you can see I have uh, I have some string here it's a little thick and this is actually I actually unraveled this from an even thicker piece of string but I'm gonna unravel this to get the individual fibers actually and I'm just gonna pull them out they're a little squiggly uh, as you can see but when you pull them and pull on them just a tiny bit it's, it's completely fine so uh, very simply, what you're gonna do is, and this is, it's a little tricky, but it's, it's not too, too difficult. So you sort of want to guide the, uh, ah, maybe I spoke too soon, maybe it is too difficult. I've lost my touch since the last piece of string that I tied. Okay, so once you, um, you know, once you have it through like that, you're just gonna wanna, just gonna wanna tie it. Oh, Lord, I just broke the shits and 
Nein! Nein! Das ist nicht gut! Alright, I'll fix that in a second. Uh, <laughs> whoops. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm very clumsy. So, yeah, you're just gonna want to tie this. Uh, I'll do a double knot. That's one. And that is two. Bam. And then all you're gonna want to do is bring it to the other side, and you're gonna want to tie it down here as well. Um, but you just saw me tie it down, so I'll just do that and fix the shuts and, and then, yeah, I'll show you guys. So here to permanently fix in the uh, string, I just pulled on it uh, with, um, yeah, with my fingers and then just added a drop or two of my uh, Contacta Professionella, which was, it's just my, my modeling glue from uh, Ravel. So yeah, it's easy. And here you can see that I'm starting to add my my bullet shell casings. Uh, basically, what I did is I just grabbed them with some tweezers and yeah, put them dab, dab them with some uh, with some of my glue and put them on there. And then here, uh, starting my my weathering or while well, doing my only weathering, just an oil wash with with midnight black and umber, and of course uh, a lot of a lot of white spirit. And this is nice, it gives it a very dirty look. And uh, yeah, I quite like this. It yeah, dirty dirty look and make sure to make sure to get it on the, the map as well. And then uh, to add highlights, I'm just dry brushing, which is like uh, you put some white white paint on your brush, remove most of the paint and then go over your, your cloth bits with it. And you might be wondering why there's a bottle of paint there, but that's just to hold the uh, hold the map in place to uh, while it's drying. So yeah. Right, and now I'm just adding a uh, a final coat of matte varnish. This is my uh, matte varnish, matte acrylic varnish from Vallejo. I added it uh, a bit too thick, actually. Um, what I would recommend you do is just do two thin layers. Instead, I just did one very thick layer, so, oops. But, oh well. Okay, so with that last, uh, with that last little layer of varnish, uh, we're actually done. And I've, it's crazy, it's actually surreal because I've been working on this for a little while now. This is the longest I've ever worked on a tank, but honestly, I think it was all worth it. And I'm, I'm super proud of what I managed to do. And, I'm super grateful that you guys were, or some of you guys were, were here for the for the whole journey. Um, yeah, really, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, general comments, uh, really not a lot to say. You know, it's again so sorry that this video is super long, um, but it, it really is hard to get these videos to be short. You know, because there's there's a lot to show, and I also like talking. Um, I like talking a lot, as you might have noticed. But, um, yeah. So, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, I am going to be sort of announcing my, uh, my next project. And, not going to lie, I'm actually already working on that project, and I have been for about six months. Um, so, before I started this YouTube channel... But, um, yeah, it, it's basically the diorama that this tank is going to go on. Uh, six months, you might think, like, wow, Jesus, you're, you're really slow. Um, but in my defense, it is a massive diorama. It's, if I remember correctly, uh, it's one meter by 30 centimeters. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's big. And it has a whole trench system in it, and I think it's really cool. 
I'm gonna have this Stug set up in a, uh, well, in a uh, sort of sniper position. And so yeah, uh, next video, <clears throat> what I'm planning on doing is, uh, <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Uh, next video, what I'm planning on doing is showing you guys how I make my barbed wire, uh, how I make and paint my barbed wire, which uh, is sort of like a small baby step towards the the bigger videos, the bigger update videos, where I'll be showing you guys some some more interesting stuff, like uh, you know how to, similar to this video, not how to spice up your tank, but how to how to spice up your trenches, for example stuff that you can do to improve the, the quality and the detail on your trenches, which I think should be pretty fun. Um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, thank you so much. If you, if you actually watch all the way to the end of this video, uh, thank you. I can't, I can't thank you enough. Um, it's lovely seeing, seeing all the support and all of that. And yeah, uh, yeah. If you if you enjoyed the video, uh, if you learned something new, make sure to yeah like. Uh, if you want to see more of my content and help me grow as a page, then I would also love it if you would subscribe. But in any case, just thank you for watching, and that's it. So in any case, I hope you have a great day, morning, evening, week, month, year, whatever. Just have a good life, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Farewell.